and welcome to the video. Hope you're having a great day. So some time ago, these two white crowned sparrows became frequent guests in my backyard. I'm positive they had a nest nearby, probably just on the other side of the fence. Uh, I have a pretty small backyard and I let my cats back there to be outside quite frequently. But whenever my cats were back there, these two sparrows would sound the alarm, which was pretty much constant all day. And it was a very high pitched chirp that they would do. And I was working from home for quite a bit during these few weeks, and I'd sit by the patio while working, so I had to listen to their chirping uh, pretty much all day. <laughs> I love birds, and I love to hear their chirping, but uh, it did get to be quite a bit much at times. Nevertheless, I still enjoyed their presence. Uh, they spent most of their time on the fence, screaming, <laughs> but occasionally they'd be on the ground hopping around, uh, usually in the morning when the cats were not outside yet. I can only assume looking for food. At about the same time, my viola flowers were in full bloom. And if you don't know what those are, they're basically small pansies. And they're probably my favorite flowers in my backyard. I'm really not too much of a gardener, but I do like to plant nice flowers and look at them. There's a patch of dirt where I put these violas, and I like to put down a variety of colors and patterns every year. And what ends up happening is that they cross-pollinate with each other. And next year, when the new ones come up, I get a, a really cool variety of colors and patterns. And it's always like a fun surprise to go out and like see what I got. That's probably the most joy I ever get out of gardening, honestly. So for today's drawing, I wanted to draw both the sparrows and the flowers together just to commemorate the two. And that's what you can see me drawing today. So at the moment, I don't really have much else to say about this drawing. And instead of just going quiet for the rest of the video, I thought I'd take this time to talk about just stuff that's been going on in my life lately. Nothing dramatic, and this is going to be more of a rambling talk, so if that's not your cup of tea, then that's okay. But I did, however, wanted to focus on a specific topic, um, and that's a struggle I've been having lately with having too many projects and ideas that I want to do, and too little time or energy to do them. So I guess I'll start just with my life first, stuff that's been going on. Um, these last two months have been filled with just, just a few things that have been keeping me distracted. And the biggest thing that happened was some flooding damage that happened in my place, and basically just dealing with the repair work that had to happen. Uh, it's nothing serious that happened, uh, but the reason for it happening was pretty lame, honestly. So the tea is, I was getting a new hot water tank installed, and I know what you're thinking, but the water damage was not from the hot water tank. Um, the installation for that tank actually went pretty well. The problem was that the tank was upstairs, and so are my washer and dryer machines. The plumbers use the drain pipe for my washing machine to drain the old tank by using a big hose connected to or from the tank to that drain pipe. That went fine, uh, but then what happened was they forgot to reconnect my washing machine to that pipe, <laughs> which I did not realize until I ran my washing machine a few days later. And even then, I didn't realize that there was a problem until water was dripping through a door frame downstairs. I think it's pretty safe to say that that has been my most oh shit moment <laughs> as a homeowner. Well, the good part of the story is that the company responsible for what happened did take full responsibility and paid for all the repair work, um, which is fantastic. The bad part is just how long the repairs took. The first phase was drying my place out, which took a full week of loud and hot fans and dehumidifiers in my place. That also happened during a bit of a brief heat wave, of course, and because these machines just made it really hot already, and with the heat wave, um, it was just so hot upstairs in my place. And if I wanted to be downstairs, which is where most of the machines were, which is a bit ironic since most of the flood was upstairs, um, the machines are just so loud that I had to like set up barriers and things to try and block out the sound. Um, I even grabbed the cushion on my couch um, to like try and block out the sound. Neither me or the cats were happy with any of this. And then besides that, um, they had to rip out some vinyl that was upstairs and downstairs, as well as some carpet pad upstairs due to the water damage. Which, to be honest, is actually, I think, pretty light in terms of stuff that had to get ripped out. Um, I did not have to have my walls broken into. Um, they were able to dry out the walls just with the fans and dehumidifiers. 
So that's good. You know, minimal damage, I suppose. But just still stressful. Like, you never want that to happen in the place that you're living in. And this is why I was working from home for a while, uh, and why I was working downstairs by the patio so I can hear all the, the birds screaming. Um, it's because the room that I usually work out of was filled with my washer and dryer, um, which didn't get put back into place until my floor was repaired, which was, yeah, about a month and a half. So I went a month and a half without a washer and dryer. Once my place was dried out, I then had to deal with getting repair work done. I had to get that carpet pad put back in, I had to get some new vinyl in, and that's really what took the longest, just between finding somebody to do the work and then scheduling it and having them come out. And yeah, that was really just a source of stress for quite a while. Um, and a lot of the days during that time, I just didn't really feel like trying to do anything else after work in the evening, um, which just meant less time working on my art projects. I'm the kind of person that like, if a stranger is going to be at my place or even just anyone's going to be at my place, it's like the only thing I can think about and it just distracts me for the whole day. I just can't focus on anything else until that thing happens and then afterwards I'm just tired and drained. Relieved that it's over, but dealing with housework is just, well, it's always stressful, but for me it just really kind of took out a lot of my motivation to do anything else. So that was that, and well, what else happened two months ago? Tears of the Kingdom came out. I am a huge Zelda fan, and Zelda games are pretty much the only games that I am guaranteed to play to completion. And Tears of the Kingdom is a very long game, and I kind of wanted to do nothing else but play that once it came out. And at the time of this recording, I am still playing it. Um, I could finish it in one sitting, probably. Um, the next quest in the main storyline is to go defeat Ganondorf and, I assume, save Zelda. I won't get into spoiler territory, but I assume that's what's going to happen next. But I am prolonging the game by trying to find all the shrines and explore the underground and the Sky Islands first. Uh, for me, um, and especially with Zelda games, uh, once I finish the main storyline, um, I don't really have much incentive to go back and do other stuff, even if there are lots of stuff to do, like quests and shrines. So I'm really just trying to do all that stuff first, so that once I go and defeat Ganondorf and finish the main storyline, I can kind of feel good about putting the game down for good. And so yeah, so right now, on days where I'm not really working on a main art piece of art, um, when I'd normally be working on another project, like a secondary project, um, I'm playing Zelda. And I'm not really sure when that will change. This is, like I said, a long game. And that sort of takes me to the other half of this conversation topic, which is too many projects to do. Currently, my biggest project, or just the main focus of my art right now, is doing full sort of finished pieces and turning that art process into videos, like you see here right now. And the goal I have for this work is in two parts. Uh, one is to improve my skills and find my style, and the other is to improve my video editing skills and make fun and interesting videos. I've also somewhat recently gotten into cross-stitching, um, which I did a lot as a kid, um, but I put it down for quite a number of years. I think the main reason why I put cross-stitching down uh, was not because I didn't enjoy it anymore, but because I got into sketching and I just was really fascinated by the idea that I could have a blank page and just draw whatever I wanted. Whereas back then I was stitching projects that um, from a pattern that was already made. And so the final piece was already predetermined. And of course there's nothing wrong with that. I just really liked the idea of making my own art. So yeah, it's been quite a number of years since I cross-stitched. And there are several reasons why I am getting back into it now. Firstly, because I like it and it's fun and relaxing. Uh, secondly, though, is because I wanted to try my hand at making my own patterns. I've actually already made my first pattern. That whole project was, well, talking about it kind of requires its own video, honestly. But in a nutshell, it was for a very specific reason that I made this design, other than just trying to make a pattern for the first time. And it's pretty huge. Um, it's a circle, but at the widest, it's 500 by 500 stitches. And for those of you who know embroidery terms, it's 8 to 18 and full coverage, so it's quite a big project. <laughs> and really, it was kind of a stupid project for me to take on as like my first pattern. It took a really long time to produce that, that pattern. 
Um, but it's now made and I'm actually pretty happy with it. Um, the supplies are all bought and right now I'm just stitching away at it. I also have another project I just started which I don't really want to talk about now only because I just started it and it's going to be a very very long term project. It's really more of a challenge honestly um, and when I say long term I mean years. <laughs> it's going to take me years to finish this. Um, I am excited about it and I am trying to work on it every day which is kind of what this challenge requires uh, but because of how long term it is there's unfortunately a really good chance I could burn out and quit and I hope that doesn't happen um, but I also want to give myself time to get into it before I talk about it um, just to be sure I'm committed to doing it. Those are really the main projects I have going uh, but there's still more that I want to do. I think it'd be fun to learn to make designs like things that would look cute on a t-shirt or stickers um, and I have plenty of ideas of designs I want to draw, but I really need to practice and probably study design theory and crap like that, you know. I also think it'd be fun to learn how to make surface patterns, uh, but that's something that I really need to study, learn techniques, and again, practice. I want to one day learn character design. That's something that I'm interested in. That's much less of a priority and the thing that I have much less practice on and I, that's something that I need lots of practice to get good at. I also have ideas for stories, both for books but also comics. I've worked on a few of these stories, uh, one really in the past, but it's now been years since I last wrote anything, and yet I do still think about these stories and hope one day I can complete them um, for another story that's really suited to be a comic than a book. I'm still thinking about it often and writing down details on characters and plot, but I am nowhere near even considering doing a comic right now. And oh, I'm sure there are other projects that I have or that I have left off this list. The point is, even without these last few months being distracting, I am just buried in ideas. I have a full-time job, so on weekdays I really only have the evening to work on these projects. And while I have basically no social life. The weekends just always seem to fill up with stuff to do. Maintenance around the house or the garden, errands to run, family to visit. Just seems like the best time to work on projects for me is after work on weekdays, which unfortunately are the times I am feeling the least motivated and most tired to work on them. After work, I just really want to eat dinner and watch TV. And while I can sketch and doodle while watching TV, I found if I want to get any real work done, the TV needs to either be off or I need to put something on that I can just listen to. The truth is, I am somebody that just desperately needs their downtime. I cannot operate if I went straight from work to working on any projects to bed. I need some time every day to just turn off my brain and veg. So what am I to do? Well, I don't really know, honestly. I don't really have any solid conclusions to this whole ramble. I do have ideas on how to manage all this though. First and foremost, I simply cannot expect myself to work on all these projects and ideas and expect to get anything done. It'd just be stretching myself way too thin. Some stuff I just have to table for now, like stories, character designs, and stuff like learning how to make patterns. Other stuff I just have to view as secondary projects, like my cross stitching. I think I do already know what my main focus is though, and that's making videos. I really do want this channel to go somewhere. I love seeing the end product and seeing my art process turned into something new and hopefully one day enjoyable to experience. I am still baby at making videos and because of work and life in general, uh, I really can't expect myself to make more than a video a month at this point. It just takes time to do this. But my hope is, as I learn and gain experience, I can speed up the process. The other thing I need to do is recenter myself on what I want to draw. My first love with art is creature design. And really, when I came up with the idea to try to make a YouTube channel, my idea was to have it centered around creature design. Which means this art that I'm drawing right now, while I had fun drawing it, is a bit off topic. I am happy with how it turned out. That is, I love how the birds turned out in the end, and the flowers are nice, if a bit simple. I'm not entirely in love with the background. 
but honestly, I don't really want to be doing backgrounds anyway. If I did it more, I would get better at it, sure, but it's not really what I want to do, so why am I doing it? I just want to draw creatures. So that's kind of the end of my ramble. The moral? Well, I suppose I can say, if you have lots of ideas and not enough time to work on them, focus on one idea to be your main focus and the rest can either be secondary projects or put on the back burner for the time being. But then again, we all operate differently and have different levels of available time and energy. So take my advice with a grain of salt. Do what you gotta do to get stuff done. For me, I don't know if I see much change, honestly, because I think I am already focusing my time on these drawings and on making videos. Um, and I'm already treating Cross Stitch as a secondary project, um, and this new project that I'm not talking about yet is taking up some time, but the idea is that it won't take up much time each day, so that is hopefully not going to run into me too much. But I think what I will change, actually, is just the focus on my videos and the focus on um, my drawings being more centered around creature design. As much as I love drawing birds, and I will absolutely draw more birds in the future, um, I think if I really want to recenter myself and kind of make more progress with what I want to be doing, um, I need to be doing more creature design. And definitely less backgrounds. And well, that's all I really have to say, so thank you so much for listening, for anyone who is still listening, and I hope this video was entertaining in some way, shape, or form. And I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.